This week's episode is brought to you by these mushrooms I just found that we took. I think they're not doing much, though. They might be wait, duds. Wait, wait, wait. What's going on? What is it? Oh, man. Why am I... <laughs> I can see words. I this can feel <laughs> time. Whoa. Let's just get into it then. Get in there. Get in my belly. Get Hello. in my belly. Welcome to Hot Podcast, the official podcast of Fat Bastard and and movie references <laughs> that are 15 years old. <laughs> we are the official podcast of Country Hot Podcast. <laughs> I eat because I'm unhappy, and I'm unhappy because I eat. Um, <laughs> yes. We talk about country music. I'm your host, Steve Hodge. In case you me, as always, is my co-host, cousin and lover, Kevin Hodge. Oh, what is up, everyone? Today, we're going to talk about how Whiskey Myers got a huge boost in sales because of a show called Yellowstone, which yeah. I like to watch. Uh, and then we're going to talk about Zane Williams and our and our favorite songs by him. And uh, yeah, my <laughs> we're gonna I'm going to say the cursed. You're going to say it's going to be a it. short ep- episode because we don't have much to talk about, you, you, and it's going to be a 50 us. minute episode. Somehow yeah. we're going to stumble upon some <laughs> random topic, and we're going to discuss it for no less than like three hours. Like how Gooch beat George Strait's record. Oh God, I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, I guess we could briefly talk about that. Uh, so uh, that's why I tweeted. If anyone follows us on Twitter, you realize that I tweeted. Uh, Gooch may have beaten King George's record, but people will still know who George Strait is in 30 years because I firmly believe that. That yeah, it's it, and it's one of those where it, it it doesn't mean anything to me anymore. Like I don't know if yeah. the radio and singles ever did mean anything to me. Like I wanted my the artist that I liked to have number ones because that would yeah. mean commercial success and whatnot. Um, yeah. but the radio is act like beyond pointless to me now. So it's almost yeah. like. It, because it's, it's not like natural. It, yeah, and it, so it's like, okay, yeah, so you you have a, a, a thing behind you promoting your music to an area that they're just going to fucking eat it up and play it. Like, th- there's no critical analysis on anything on the radio. There's no fucking... Yeah. It, it's just all trash and the, the labels... People aren't requesting songs anymore. Yeah, yeah, the, the labels play what the... Or the radio plays what the labels want to be played because I'm guessing they're fucking pay for the radio stations to exist because so many people are getting music from alternative means at this point it's not like how it used to be where people actually heard a song and they couldn't listen to that song constantly if they wanted to so they'd call up the radio and want a song to be played now it's i can listen to whatever the fuck i want via youtube spotify apple music whatever the fuck the radio is pointless and so people getting number ones nowadays it just it absolutely means nothing to me and on top of that I feel like I have to, again, bring up the fact that, uh, you know, Stapleton outsold, like, everybody ever that's on the yeah. radio right now, yet has <laughs> yeah. no number one. So it's like, okay, so it's, you're not even reflecting who's actually yeah. selling well either. So it's just it's, it's like, just a sham. It's like Cody Johnson's uh, With You I Am hit the top 40, but if that was actually heard by the masses, it would have gone number one. It's like oh, all yeah. these songs that... People like would love like Cody Jinx would go number one in a heartbeat if people actually heard him on the radio. Like, yeah. there's no doubt in my mind that that would happen. But uh, the one thing that I do like about the radio that just happened is, I guess uh, I saw it somewhere online that uh, apparently Sam Hunt's new single is struggling to make the top twenty. Like, it isn't even; it's not even in the top twenty yet. And it oh. makes me super happy that maybe his career's or his career's not dead, but maybe people are growing a brain and not listening to that shit anymore. Yeah, but, it, um, it's just I don't I fucking don't understand who these people are who listen to the radio, especially because like I think about. Uh, the different jobs that I've worked in my life where I would listen to the radio, like I haven't had one in fucking years. 
Uh, but like when we were at the concrete plant back in the day, and we'd have a radio to listen to, which was better than just the sound of the concrete mixers making fucking noise. Well, um, not today's country radio. Well, exactly. That was <laughs> 2000 and fucking, you know, 11 or whatever. Eight or nine or ten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so listening to it then, we even noticed, like, holy shit, when the DJ comes on to start their segment of the day, the first thing they do is just play all the fucking songs that were just played. You'd hear the same yeah. songs repeatedly throughout the day. It's and I'm like, like God, it, who it's like ESPN. Who wants it's that? just the same hour all day. <laughs> Yeah, well, the ESPN used to be cool when you couldn't actually watch highlights, so you'd wait for Sports Center to actually see the highlights. Now the internet yeah. exists, so there's really no point in having twenty four seven sports yeah. coverage. Yeah, it's stupid. Um, but yeah, so fuck Gooch and yeah. Um, also, so if you don't know, if you haven't seen, I think actually I think Saving Country Music posted an article about. Yeah, it. I, I actually saw... I pulled that article up because I was gonna mention the other people too. Yeah, because I saw on Instagram, like, Whiskey Myers was posting all these pictures of, like, their albums going, like, Mud was number one, number on, one on iTunes charts. And then, like, all their other ones were charting, yeah. like, top ten in country and I think even on just overall genres. And I was just like, why are there, why is there music blowing exactly. up Exactly, not like, and, not in an, you know, an offensive, like, how, to, what? But it yeah. was just like, it's oh, just that's like, awesome. Where did they get this boost? But then Especially I saw, Especially since yeah, it's article. been out for a while. Well, because, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw, um, or I was actually just downstairs playing Xbox or something. I don't know what I was doing. But I heard my dad upstairs watching the show. I think it's called Yellowstone. Is that what it is? It's yeah, like it's Kevin called Costner. Yellowstone. I actually want and, to watch it. I just haven't yet. Yeah, I did too. It's Kevin Costner, so it's got to be pretty good. And but it's like a, it's I heard, a Western Yeah, type and deal. I heard him upstairs, and I heard Whiskey Myers playing on the show. I was like, oh, I don't know what he's watching, but they're playing Whiskey Myers. That's pretty fucking cool. And then I found out, yeah, it was that because he walked down after he goes, Yellowstone is a great show. I'm like, all right, I'll check it out. But yeah, the fact that I think they were actually featured, not only their song, I think the band yes, was actually They are, actually, they are the actually in an episode. I don't, I, again, I haven't watched it, so I can't comment on exactly what was going on. But reading this, you know, having this article by Saving Country Music up, it says that... Uh, they actually are like in a bar performing, you know, in the show for uh, some of the songs that they're playing. So that's probably why so many people were like also keen to look at them and buy their music as opposed to yeah. the stuff that's in the background. Because I was just looking at some of the artists on here. Uh, some of them are big time, like, you know, Chris Stapleton, Tennessee Whiskey apparently plays in the background. People would recognize uh, that and know yeah. it. But then obviously Whiskey Myers is awesome. But the thing I also saw that was really cool is the Trishas is one of the groups oh, that's nice. included. And I think that's just super badass. Our best friend, Jamie Lynn. Yeah, Lindos. Jamie Lynn getting in there. That's awesome. And then, but friend. also... Uh, We're best friends. Exactly. We're be best friends. We're going to speak that. Friends. We're going to speak that into existence. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Lynn, if you're listening, be our friend. Um, but then also Whitey Morgan's on there, Billy Joe Shaver's on there, uh, Ryan Bingham's on there, and then oh, nice. even Uncle Lucius with Keep the Wolves Away. That's a song I've had Ooh, saved I love for Uncle a long Lucius. time. I yeah, really dig their sound, and I really love that song, so I'm like, damn, that's like that's a really good collection of music that they've used in this uh, this I show. Know. I gotta well, I gotta, I gotta get on the, that shit. The better uncle, though? Uncle Cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that's the awesome. beat, boys, and free my soul. Yeah, um, but no, I think it's really cool. It's kind of also like, uh, what was it? The Ranch also does it. They have a bunch of yeah, like, really well, the, good music featured on the it. The Ranch pisses me off, though, because they, they... Didn't they go to a Thomas Rhett concert? Well, yeah, so they, they, <laughs> they constantly have good music in the background of scenes or like as a transition between scenes or in the in the credits but then the credit song the, is mamas don't let your babies grow yeah, up to be cowboys yeah but then <laughs> like, the, in the show their dialogue brings up fucking Florida Georgia line and Sam Hunt and they go to a Thomas Rhett concert and when they're referring <laughs> to Sam Hunt and Gooch they're actually like referring to them in like a good way and I'm like whoa yeah. whoa, 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 whoa 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 yeah the writers and the people who are in charge of music are apparently on very different paths here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's really f- – because they have, like, really, like, unknown American and country stars. I can't remember anyone off the top of my head. But... I just know that I, I for sure heard Turnpike, and I know I for I think... sure heard Josh Ward. I was going to say, I think Josh Ward was in it. I haven't watched the show. I've seen bits and pieces when you and Doug have watched it, but I that's actually what I want to watch. I, I will it. firmly – cement that in the category of it is a guilty pleasure type show because it really is just a fucking 
It's just a it's shitty a sitcom. Cow- <laughs> it's, a sh- it's a shitty cowboy sitcom with a laugh track. So it's like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'm not, I supremely I'm not big enjoy on the laugh it. track, but Man. it doesn't. Yeah. Laugh tracks don't deter me from shows, though. Like, because I will say the guiltiest of pleasures of for me is Big Bang Theory, but I will admit that the laugh track is so overused that it's painful. I like, physically <laughs> cannot watch that show. <laughs> it is. <laughs> So terrible. We'll do it. We'll do a it's, Twitter poll of yes or no. God, exactly. <laughs> it's just so bad though. Like every time I even try to watch a bit of, like even when they have like a snippet for it, like you know during the football season coming on tonight, you know this episode, and they have like some random thing that someone says, and then the nerd just goes, "Actually, nerd thing." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are pretty bad moments in it, but. I don't know. Overall, I've, it's 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 not one that I'm obsessed with, but it's like one I could have on the background while playing Candy Crush on my phone. Um, I but, certainly could have it on the TV with the sound off while I'm in another room. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll watch Yellowstone and then we could have like a quick review on this or something. Oh, yeah. I want to know if there's a way to watch it. Uh, Probably on demand. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. I got to figure out if it's on demand or if it's going to be on. Because Paramount Network is what Spike used to be, and I don't know what their shows would have been on uh, for streaming services. Yeah, no idea. Uh, but I might just dig into my DirecTV and see if I can get that recorded for Speaking the future. Of um, movies and reviews and shit, I got an email about reviewing a movie called Buckshot, which is about. Uh, outlaw country music i like movies he asked if we wanted to review it but i haven't replied yet but obviously we don't really review things anymore but i would definitely be down for watching it and maybe doing an episode on it or something yeah i uh, love movies so i'd I'd do it for sure kevin kevin is is a cinephile um i hate those words because they always sound like they're not what they are like cinephile meaning person who likes movies, but it just it sounds way too close to pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just every and time, that, and that bothers me because I'm a pedophile and I'm proud of it. <laughs> and I hate movies, and I don't <laughs> want to be lumped I'm, in with them. I'm I'm so tired of this derogatory, <laughs> condescending ter- way of saying pedophile. <laughs> You're uh, a pedophile. Oh, so you love movies too? No, <laughs> uh, no, no. M- movie movies of a sense that get me arrested. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, I am not a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's like it's like when you go on Twitter and someone calls you a Nazi and you have to come out and say you're not a Nazi or else everyone just assumes you are. Because well, that's all I'm works. saying is now that we've both joked about pedophilia, neither of us are allowed to direct Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> I, was, I was just about to quit my job to do that, too. <laughs> yeah. uh, fucking next is Rick and Morty. Uh, um please no yes. no please god no all right anyway uh, <laughs> we move on to the artist of the week um if you haven't heard zane williams you've probably heard a song he's written because yeah he's one that when i was listening to his music today i was sitting at a desk for 12 hours so i just had music playing the whole day so i don't go crazy and i binged through his discography a few times and he was one that i realized like you can tell when listening to his music that he is a songwriter like yeah. his his songs are so well written and I fucking love them. I remember when he first came out, like I heard one of his songs and I was like, This is a really cool song, I really like it. But then I went to like one of his CDs and I'm like, I'm not a huge fan of this actually. But then I just started listening to it more and more and I was like, Alright, I don't know what the hell I was thinking when I first listened to him because I love it. I think it was yeah. because it, it was his one album with that grey one with like just his face. I can't remember what that album's called. Um, Texas like that. Yeah, and that I think because that was the first one I heard, and I was just like, "This is." I think that's probably my least favorite album by him. It's not a bad album, but it's probably my least. I don't even think I have a. I don't even think I have a song from it on my top ten, actually. Yeah, I mean, just <laughs> scrolling through it, I can't see any of them that are really jumping out to me. I kind of like "Here's to You," but uh, it's not on my top ten. Mm. Um, but yeah, so Zane Williams, he's written songs for like Pat Green, Cody Johnson. Uh, Jason Michael Carroll. Um, oh, there's others. I can't think of it, though. Ah, I don't know. But he's a huge... He's a songwriter, and you can tell in his music, and I fucking love that about him. Yeah. Um, so this week, 
Well, Kevin couldn't listen to music that much at work, so he, that's part of the reason why. But Zane Williams is also one I listen to probably a little more than you. So definitely figured... in the the broader scope of more of his music, because uh, he's one of those yeah. that like I have a few of his songs on different playlists, and there are ones that are like my go tos that I really like. Yeah. But as I was listening, just you know. A little bit before we started recording, I was like, okay, there's a lot of these songs that I don't remember if I have ever heard before, so <laughs> yeah. I don't think I can adequately make a top ten. So yeah, yeah Steve's going to take it. The top six of my list are ones that I've been listening to for a long time that I listen to a lot. The other four are ones that I listen to a good chunk, but not as much, but they're all good. Uh, this one was actually Word. a tough one to make too, because what I got down to like forty songs of his, and I was just like, "These are all really good." What can I? I can't decide. Yeah. The only like the top six were ones that I had like I knew these were going to be on. Mm-hmm. But uh, so let's just hop into it. Um, mm-hmm. Number ten is River Girl. You put your hand in mine, pretty fingers that fit just fine. Walk down where the river gets wide. I'm just gonna starting. just gonna hang. <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna be like Coetzel. Just he's gonna be staring off into space while I talk. Um, so River Girl, actually, if you if you look up the lyrics to this song, if you read the lyrics, you would think it's like a bro pop country song type thing because it's about a guy who like drives down to a river to hang out with his girlfriend, and the lyrics are just kind of like the we go down the dirt road, we go past the fence post, and like all that kind of stuff. But the way it's played is such a gorgeous song that I love it. Like the lyrics aren't bad. I'm not trying to say that, but they sound like if you put it to a hip hop beat and Sam Hunt was rapping them, I wouldn't be surprised. (laughs) That's how it it went out because this, the the lyrics are kind of, I don't know if you're looking at them or not. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, they are kind of bro ish sounding, but the song itself is a beautiful country song. And I love it for that reason. Because even though the lyrics aren't top notch, the music is, and so it kind of raises the level of the song. Word. Um, number nine is the distance between. Ain't it funny how you never win the game you never try, and even when you try, there ain't no easy way to rise above the past that led you where you. I've got a head from dreams that I don't want to forget. I'm always on my way, yeah, but I'm never quite there yet. And I'm tired of seeing the distance between. This song is just, it's kind of one of those that it's super depressing when you think of it. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's a song about uh, how he kind of wanted to grow up to be this good person, but, like, the chorus is, um, where is it? Bop, bloop, bloop. Uh, why can I, oh. I'm tired of seeing the distance between the man in the in, in the mirror and the man I want to be. So it's just this. I love that lyric one, but two, it's like this great song of how he wanted to live his life to his best to the fullest, but he's kind of hasn't done it, and he's just kind of, uh, and it's just kind of that. Like there's the di- there's this distance between who I am and who I want to be, and it's just a kind of a gorgeous song that has that kind of sentiments that i'm sure many people have had of yeah I'm that's, living my life yeah to the fullest that's awesome that's that hearing those words makes me think of the uh fucking dalton domino's corners where he says yeah the uh, who i was ain't who i am bit it's pretty cool yeah it's yeah fantastic um number what are we on eight 
is Christmas Feels Like Christmas Again. I guess we've been running low on Christmas cheer. But all that is changing this year. Cause there's a miracle sleeping down the hall. A newborn innocent baby boy, so sweet and small. And it's amazing how when we're holding him, all the light and the joy and the hope we'd lost. Come rushing back in Somehow Christmas feels like Christmas again I love Christmas songs. Just kidding. It's not a really Christmas song. It's not a Christmas say. song. It's a, Objection. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just about Rudolph and Snowman and Santa Claus and Hanukkah. Wait. You wrote uh, this super original song. It's about bells and they're silver. <laughs> No, it's actually nothing about Christmas. It's just that's the setting of the song. It talks about how, uh, like, last Christmas, uh, the reef was... You gave me your heart, and the very next day, you gave it away? Yes, exactly. (laughs) Moving on. No, uh, it's like the the year before, the house was, like, the roof was leaking. He couldn't pay his rent. Like, his dad had a heart attack, and he spent Christmas in, like, the hospital. Like, he survived, but... (laughs) <laughs> He's like, and so he goes, but this year Christmas feels like Christmas again because we're at home. My There's a baby down the hall in a crib. My dad survived, and he's wearing a sweater that says, like, world's best grandpa and all. Like, it's like Christmas feels like Christmas again. Like, last year was terrible, but even though we're not, like, rich this year, Christmas is a happy time again. Mm. And I just love that. Like, it could be 4th of July. It could be birthday. It could be New Year's. It, it, the setting doesn't matter. It's just that... It has that sentiment of like this holiday that's supposed to be happy is finally happy again, and I just it's such a beautiful song in that kind of sense. Sure. Um, yeah, Kevin hates Christmas and feelings and happiness. Uh, Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, next is number seven, "Home Sweet Home." And you're my hiding place. You're the world I. You're my rest when the road is long. You're the greatest single blessing I could never own. Yeah, all I need is you, baby. You're my home sweet home. He just does his best to cover up Motley Crue song, and it's just and he phenomenal. does it well. <laughs> Uh, this one, I don't think the lyrics are actually anywhere on the internet. I don't know if you can find them. But the uh, the song is pretty much this, they're living kind of paycheck to paycheck in a way, but he has a gig in a city that's a couple hours away, and he's super happy to go to it. But home is like pretty much, it's kind of one of those, I'm away from my girl and I really miss her type things because she is my home sweet home, and mm. it's that kind of love sentiment. And it's it's just... Uh, it's another one where it's not the deepest of lyrics, but the way it's performed is phenomenal. And it's from his first CD, so usually, and even though you could tell it's kind of a lower quality like recording, it's still a really well put together album, and it's really fantastic. Um, oh yeah, number six is bringing country back. Bringing back that stone cold, solid gold, good old country. Just cause you don't hear it anymore Don't mean there's no one to fill the shoes Some folks still get off on a song like that I guess that's why I'm bringing country back It's, I think, the title song of his yep. newest album. Yep, that's what and, it's called. And it's so, I love it because it's, it's, kind of a country protest song which again if you if this is your first episode country protest songs are you're protesting nashville and what music is kind of standing for now and you're you want uh, like original and good country music so it's that that's what country protest songs are but it's kind of that thing of like where he's saying like nashville doesn't you know really represent us they say country's dying but it's actually just gone underground and like 
what we're doing our best to keep country alive and so we're bringing country back and it's just a fantastic it's super upbeat song of uh, yeah it's just fuck the mainstream we're yeah. we're doing country right yeah and i remember when this uh album was coming out i saw the the title and i saw the album cover where he he put a cowboy hat on for the yeah. first time in his album yeah picture career yeah. <laughs> and then it being titled bring in country back and i was like oh no did they get to him is he all nashville up now oh, uh not yeah. at all not at all and so i was very yeah. excited about that yeah and it actually that just reminds me of uh that coat what cody jinx said at his concert last oh, week yeah. of it i it's not verbatim because i couldn't write it down fast enough but he pretty much said we're bringing back the 70s when artists played together and sang each other's songs fuck nashville we're starting our own club and yeah, that was i believe i believe he thing. said so we said fuck nashville we'll do our own thing or we'll make our own club or whatever and i just realized what the other thing we had to talk about was, was that, that concert yeah, last week exactly um we'll talk about it after the top 10 so stay tuned for that um, <laughs> yeah that one big thing what was it oh yeah, yeah that huge thing that we did last week um <laughs> god damn yeah, it so yeah stay tuned for that we'll talk about it after these the top 10 um Anyway, yeah, number five, overnight success. Next, you borrow ten grand from your uncle and you make a CD. Good luck paying him back, cause it's a modern day fact. Anybody can get it for free. Spend your time online making virtual fans, shopping for a band band while you work for the man. Do you book enough? But that's just step two. Two step now. This, this is song. one of those, yeah, this is one of those great songs of like, it's Aaron Watson kind of is the same one with Fence Post. And uh, it's just one of those songs of like, they call you an overnight success, but I've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah, like, it, it, it's, it's a combination of the songwriting being what sounds to be super relatable for anyone who was a musician in yeah. uh, that struggle. But then also like all the, the minor things in the background, like because it starts out simple. Then as he talks about assembling the band, the band comes in. Yeah. And like when he says like you buy an old secondhand amp with a knob that sticks and then it's got like the the fuzzy kind of yeah. sound of the the thing being plugged in and like all the little things it's just and then a you, really it cool just says you learn how to play a classic guitar if and you hear mama tried like yep. play in the background and stuff it's so, yeah it's such a great song but yeah i love it it's just such a very real thing of like they're gonna think you're an overnight success because they're gonna go from not hearing who you are to knowing who you are but it's yep. taking you all this time of just grinding away in bars like you find you get together with your guy like the guy from church and a friend of a friend who's learning yep. how to play bass <laughs> and you finally get that friday night gig and then you finally get leno and all like all that kind of shit and it's just a really cool song of like this is what it takes to be cut like yep. and then he at the end of the song he just goes ah maybe you should just try out for american idol exactly <laughs> <laughs> just yeah talking about like how difficult it is but you have to do it if you want to survive in it. Because he goes like, step seven is quitting, but then step eight is coming back to it because you realize it's what exactly. you have to do. And then I don't remember what step. He's just like, fire the original band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire the band by a van. Like, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. Uh, but yeah, it's a fantastic song. Um, number four is Hello World. Well, the sun ain't shown his face yet. He's coloring the clouds, painting me a picture that must make the maker proud. And the morning dove is singing a song in the morning stars, and it's a peaceful feeling being happy where you are. Happy right there where you are, singing hello, misty mountains, blue in the light of dawn, hello. Share filling up my lungs so I can say hello world, thanks for another day. This is a lady on a 
Antebellum song. It's just fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, that actually is a good song. But yeah. this song, I love it because it's, I still remember listening to it on a, it was like a, just a summer Saturday, waking up, going and doing this workout with my trainer and a bunch of other people out in a park and driving home with the windows down, cranking up Hello World. And that was like the best mood I was yep. have been in for a long time because this song is so upbeat. It is like impossible not to be happy with it. And it, it's so upbeat, but so like stone cold country upbeat, not yeah. like a yeah. pop sounding upbeat. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. It's like, it's just so country, but it's got that, you know, bopping back and forth feel to it. It's just, it's just great. And, yeah. then, and then the line being, you know, Hello World. I don't know if he says to say thanks, thanks for another, for another yeah, day. Thanks for another yeah. day. It's just it's nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah, it's such a good upbeat song. Like it's the perfect it's warm out driving with your windows down song. Like, yep. It's perfect for it. Now we get into the top three, which are all very depressing. <laughs> yes. Um yes. first is number three, Jayton and Jill. Had an all night down here, they waited out the storm. Ended up talking right. I don't know what the hell Jayton is. I've never heard that name before, but that's the man in the story. Uh, so pretty much, it's a story. It's kind of a just a small town girl living in a lonely world, just a midnight boy or whatever the fuck that song journey uh it's like talking about how the, the guy <laughs> the guy is uh he works at like a gas station or whatever and the girl is like the rebel preacher's daughter and it's a story about she goes on a date with a guy from out of town and he starts getting grabby and like tears at her dress and so she gets out and like runs like this dude's obviously tried to assault her and so the guy jayton is driving down the street and over the hill he sees her like walking and like crying and stuff and he's just like can i help you and she's like no stay away and he's like i'm not leaving you out here like come with me like i'm taking you to town like that kind of thing and they end up going to a diner and talking all night and having a really good time obviously that then they fall in love that whole thing and then the end of the it just it has a nice little hill of sad to happy to sad cuz yeah. the end of the story is he's telling the girl while on a date Oh, I was driving out there to kill myself. And it's just like, what? (laughs) And so it's just like, I had stolen my dad's 45, and if I didn't see you going over the hill, I would have ended it. It's just like, what the fuck? It's like this kick in the crotch. Tell you what, that that songs like that with the uh, with the sadness bell curve, where it's sad, happy, sad. (laughs) Oh, every time. Yeah, it was. But this, like, because I actually didn't. I didn't hear it until we started. I think. I might have heard it before, but I didn't really listen to it until we, yeah. I started listening for this episode. And I was listening, I was like, oh, the guy's, you know, White Knight. And I thought it was going to be like a drunk girl White Knight type yeah, song. That but then the shit. ending, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah, I, like, what the fuck? I, yeah, this is one that I, I feel like I have probably have heard it, but it's not coming to my mind. And I feel like it has now a that music talk- video, so it's probably a bigger yeah, one. Yeah, and now that you've talked about it, it and it is, it's, it's, it's one of his top five on, on Spotify. It's number ah. his second one. Uh, oh. But I can't think of it right now, and I'm like, well, shit, I know the first thing I'm doing after we're done recording is I'm firing that yeah. one up, because damn. Yeah. It's so good. It's so fucking good. Hell yeah. But I couldn't put it at, even though it probably is my favorite written song by him, uh, it's just, I, these next two are the ones I listen I to I feel so like I know what him. they are, but continue. Yeah. Number two is Sure Felt Like Goodbye. Still the night when she said she This 
song is just a kick in the crotch for anyone who's been in a confusing moment before the breakup of Is It Over? And it's just like uh, the girl's walking out and he's just like, is everything okay? And it's like she had tears in her eyes and that kiss just felt like a kiss goodbye. And it's just like she said it's not over, but that sure felt like goodbye. Exactly. Like Like he's keenly aware of the situation Despite they never saying anything, he's kind of in definitive. denial. Exactly, and he's just like that. Really, yeah. And so he's just talking about all the little things that he noticed that were just a little bit different and well, were oh, noticeable. Because that that goodbye kiss that lingered a little exactly. Too long. The yeah. the tears in her eyes when I said, "Baby, what's wrong?" It's just like all the things you're like, yeah, brutal. Yeah, and then Great. of course, yeah, and then of course, yeah. I've felt that before, and it's not great. What? But yeah, it's oh, that song is just powerful. It's good, but number one is the one that I I think it was the first one I ever heard by him. It's the one I've been obsessed with ever since it came out. I freaked the shit out when I saw him at Joe's live with a certain ex, and this is my favorite song by him. Is number one a little too late? Look at you laughing, leaning into him. I know that I texted you that if I had picked one, my number one probably would have been sure felt like goodbye. But in my mind very, now, it was very tough. These two, two, exactly. Yeah. I, I could argue either one of them. And They're little, interchangeable. Little Too Late is fucking tremendous. And, and yeah. if even without how great of a song it is, the goddamn violin in this song, oh, yeah. top five violin riffs like ever. Yeah. Yeah, this song, uh, it's so if you obviously you just heard the clip because I put it in, but what? it's pretty much this. Uh, just a guy who sees a girl at a bar and he's like, I could have, this girl could have been mine if I didn't wait so long. And it goes, I've never lost a girl by just waiting too long, like, or being yeah. just a little too late. And so it's like, I could go over there. I could tell the guy to fuck off and be that you're mine. But the way you just kissed him and looked in his eyes, like, obviously I've already lost you. Like, there's yeah. no way I, I'm just going to have to be over here drinking my sorrow away because I just waited too long to go talk to you. And yep. you've met the guy of your dreams already. Yeah. And it's a really um, interesting take too, because you don't hear that kind of, you know, point of view in songs very often where he's just like, I lost this girl, but it was almost before I even had a chance to do anything yeah. and, and just having the regret of not going for it. And, and all that stuff mixed with seeing how clearly happy she is. So it's like, well, no, it really is like, I yeah. don't have a shot right now in hell. So fuck. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, yeah. It's just such a good song. The way it's performed, like the instrumentation of this song is fantastic along with the lyrics just being so good. And yeah, so this is so definitely good. my favorite. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Two and one definitely interchangeable. Arguably top three are all interchangeable. Yeah. Cause yeah. Jade and Jill is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, that's it. I ha- all I have for him. But so yeah, this episode is going to go long because we just remembered that we had to talk it. about the concert you cursed last us. week. Oh, uh, if we would have I, known that going in, we might have been able to like time ourselves to be like, yeah, still have it go quick. But now we're fucked. It's over. Yeah. All right. So last week, <laughs> uh, last weekend, we saw genuinely the best single day lineup of all time. It's other than maybe Willie's Picnic yeah, because that one was just legendary. It's but. seriously like if you were to. Before I had heard of this lineup announced, if you would have told me, if you have like five artists or four artists or whatever, right in order of the ones that would make like the best lineup that you can think of right now, it's pretty fucking close to what I would have yeah. done. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. Because so we saw Dallas Moore, Ward Davis, Coulter Wall, Whitey Morgan, and Cody Jinks all on the same day at the same venue. Yes, it was insane. Right in a <laughs> row, and there wasn't. They, they all got long enough sets because i think they all played for at they least played an hour, an hour. at Cody least an hour. played an hour and a half yes. everyone else played an hour exactly so everyone had a, had a good length set there wasn't an obnoxious amount of downtime between sets 
Uh, the venue was a, a, a perfect size, I think, in terms of yeah. not being too big or not being too small. Yeah. Um, and if you've listened before, or even if you haven't, I'm just going to say it again. In my opinion, Cody Jinx is the baddest motherfucker out there making music right now. He's and the best single artist in country music yeah, today. A hundred percent. And personally, Whitey Morgan is like a top three guy right now for me because yeah. I fucking love him. I know, I probably know all of the words to all of the songs because <laughs> I am a, just absolutely obsessed with them. So those you mean like two, that hot girl that was in front of us, yeah, was a fan. <laughs> was a fan of what she was putting out. She um, knew everyone was looking. She put on a show. <laughs> then it rained a little bit. Yeah. She really put on a show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. But seriously, I, I love them two so much. And then I love Ward Davis because I started getting into him after starting Paul. to listen to <laughs> listen to <laughs> Cody Jinks and Whitey. Uh, and then Culture Wall, as we've talked about on this podcast after we saw him live. And then even before that, he is fucking phenomenal. And Ooh, then, seeing a full band this time was yes, so awesome. Absolutely. And then Dallas Moore, uh, hit, we talked about it on the Top Albums So Far podcast that we loved his album. So getting to see him was also badass. It was just yeah. fucking great, great fucking day. Yeah, so we could really quickly just kind of go through the concerts. Don't want to do, take too long. So first, yeah, Dallas Moore, as we said, we saw him uh, super pumped after we named his album one of the best of the year so far because he's just straight country. He yeah. just, it was, <laughs> they had a dude who only played harmonica just on stage for oh, yeah. belt and that shit out. It, we're not, and, he was wearing a, like a... Uh, it was a, a top hat, but like the kind of top hat that Slash would wear, and he had yeah. a cut-off <laughs> shirt that was badass. Yeah. And, uh, oh, the other thing about this was since it was five, you know, six with Craig Gertis, who we did not get there in time to see, sadly, because he is good. Yeah. But uh, those six, they're all such similar, like in the realm, the same realm of country music, that everyone there knew all the words to, like, their songs. Exactly. I think, I think the only one, like, the least known one there was Coulter Wall. Yeah. Because Which is a travesty, but also understandable. Yeah, because the people in the pit, they knew his songs. You could tell they were, you know, cheering to Coulter Wall songs, but everyone else was just kinda like, I don't know who this guy is. Well the guy the kid in front of us was just like, How old do you think this guy is? And you're just like he's twenty three and he's like, What? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, I know this for a fact, but he's twenty three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, Jesus, it sounds sixty. I'm like, Yeah, we yeah, we know he does. He yeah. gets Coulter Wall. That's uh, awesome. I, I am aware because he's great and I listen to him. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so then Ward Davis came on, and this was the highlight of the fucking, not his set, per se, but he comes out, and he just, like, Cody Jinx comes out and sings, um, I don't remember what song he sang with him. He what came out and sang a song with him. him. And, Why uh, can't I remember that? As as Cody Jinx is walking off stage, he goes, hey, is Paul back there? And Cody just kind of shrugs, like, uh And he goes, tell him I want to sing Luke and Bach with him. And so he's like, he walks off, and then all of a sudden, he's like, a few songs later, he starts playing Luke and Bach. He goes, all right, Paul's supposed to come out here and sing this with me. Where are you at, Paul? And, like, he doesn't come out, and then he gets to the last part, the last verse, which is what Willie sings. Or no, no, I'm thinking of Mamas. Never mind. It's what the last verse. No, it is what Willie sings, right? Wait, what are you on saying? The, on the recording? Sorry. Luke and Bach? I was not paying attention yeah it's the last verse where willie sings on yeah. the whalen one and that's where paul was supposed to come out and he just goes so he goes he's like uh let's go to luke and Bach, texas where the hell is paul Cullen yeah or whatever yeah with, i think it was just like with whalen and willie and not paul yeah <laughs> and then, so at the end of the song he's just like damn it paul you didn't come out and then his next song like he's playing on a piano and he finishes the song and just goes paul yeah. <laughs> just like paul i don't know why i ever listened to that guy which is hilarious yeah. too because I do I do love Paul Cawthon and so I feel like yeah. the only thing that could have made that day better is if he had his own set as well because oh, yeah. I fucking love him. And then uh, oh yeah because then Paul. earlier in the set he just as he finishes Luke and Buck text he just goes Paul Cawthon everybody. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah so Paul Cawthon was there because he's on tour with uh, Ward. Yep. And so. Uh, yeah, that was that was a great show. And then Coulter Wall, as we said, he comes on. People didn't really know, but he put on a hell of a show with a with a full band. So you got to hear yep. steel guitar with his songs, which was amazing. Yeah, and fucking and Dobro. Some new ones. The Dobro was beautiful. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Whitey came out, and it started pouring during the set yeah. for a little bit, and we got real wet. But it was still a fantastic show. Yeah, and, and then uh, uh, Jinx came Cody out and Jinx sang came out during Sinner. Yep, which is uh, the what I tweeted out, which I. I got a lot, of, lot of Twitter traffic from a tweets this week, so I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, but what Look I tweeted you. out that my 
like before this past weekend, one of the best, if not the best show I think I've ever been to is when Cody Jinx and Whitey Morgan played together and we saw him in Indianapolis. And when Jinx came out and sang Sinner with him that first time when I had no idea it was coming, one of the greatest yeah. moments of my entire life. Uh, and yeah. so when he came out again to do it, I'm just like, yes, this is amazing. Yeah. I yeah. love everything. And then, and then finally Cody Jinx goes on and uh, – this is how I was thinking of this show. This show is pretty much seeing a new Highwaymen start. Yes. Just I would have I would have died and gone to heaven if they all came out and sang Highwaymen. Because at one point, Paul Cawthon, Ward Davis, Whitey Morgan, and Cody Jinks were on stage together yes. singing a song, and that was unbelievable. It was I it, was it was fucking a, blown away. It was a fucking beautiful moment. Uh, Jinx is amazing, and so his entire set was just amazing anyway. But then having those guys go out on stage, and and you can tell when they're on stage with each other that they are actually really good friends. Like Jinx always yeah. says, you know, when that, whenever someone comes on stage and they walk off, he always says like, "My brother, you know, Ward or Whitey or whatever." Yeah. Uh, and you know that he means it. And and the thing that I thought was amazing, uh, I can't, I don't think I can pull it up fast enough to make it worthwhile. But if you see the picture of the track listing for Jinx's album that's coming out this week, every single one of those songs, essentially, there's two of them that aren't touched by Jinx or any of them, but every other song on that thing has Jinx and then either Paul Cawthon, Ward Davis, Whitey Morgan, or Tennessee Jet on every fucking one of them. So they're all yeah. writing songs together. It's yeah. awesome. So as we said on that uh, that quote that I said during the top ten is when all four of those guys are on stage, they walk off and, you know, Jinx continues his set, and he just goes like, we sing each other songs, we're bringing back that era of where guys would play together, that, like, he pretty much shit talks like, no one out there plays together anymore, we're gonna play together, we're gonna sing each other songs, we're gonna keep this alive... So that's why I was just like, fuck Nashville, we're starting our own club. Exactly. Because it, it, these dudes yeah. are the Highwaymen re reincarnated. Like, yeah. they are just the most talented people in country music right now, and they're playing together. Yeah. They're friends, they, they write each other shit, it's amazing. It's, it's an amazing thing to witness, getting to see it on the stage that it is currently. And even if they don't ever fucking take another leap into stardom to the way that I think that they all deserve massive, you know, appeal across the board. Uh, they should be the top four people in the country. It, yeah, it, and yeah <laughs> I, I really feel that way. But then even, like, even if they don't, it's still just such an amazing thing. Like, this is, this is the group of, this is the way I think music should be done and the way touring should be done. When you're with people that you like, it's not just the label said, I'm bringing along this guy who's got some fucking single mm -hmm. out that's because doing well. Because we're on the same yeah. label. No, it's... We all want to tour together because we like to fucking hang out. We write music together. We play music together. And then even the idea of going out on stage and singing with each other, like, throughout the whole day, like, that is a foreign concept if you only yeah. see stadium shows. Like, yeah, they might and... bring them out at the very end or whatever, like, once or whatever the fuck, but no. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Well, and yeah, and it. it's also, well, going along with that, it's like uh, when Whitey Morgan first came out on stage, well, during Jinx set, when he walked off stage, he goes, I have traveled coast to coast more times with that man than anyone else. Like, yeah. we have toured together so much. And be because, yeah, they're friends. They're two of the most talented guys in country music right now, and they're friends, and they play together, and it's fucking they awesome. They play real, authentic music, and God damn it, do they put on a show. They're God, yeah, so them. if if you haven't heard the podcast before, we were, we were talking about how it's close for the greatest of all time for a single day because the other one is we saw uh, Willie's Picnic in 15 with Willie, Eric Church, Merle Haggard, Casey Sturgill. Musgraves, Sturgill, Jason Isbell, uh, 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 Jamie Johnson was there? Yep. Yeah, Jamie Johnson, Chris Christofferson. Like, it was a legendary day, and there are a couple others yeah. that aren't coming to mind right yeah, now. Yeah, that day was unbelievable and the fact that you know for me personally getting to see merle live before he died mm -hmm. like that's huge it was like nine months before he died yeah so, and so yeah. like that's fucking huge and i will never forget that but just also mama tried just, live yeah but also just the, like fuck that saturday lineup that we just witnessed was so good <laughs> it might go down in history as like one of the best because that's gonna be the, that's gonna be yeah. our 
it's it's going to be kind of our Alabama for five dollars. Yeah, to, to get to see that lineup, it, it's it's insane. You know, granted, where, how the you know how much album sales or whatever the fuck you want to quantify artists nowadays. Yeah, sure, it makes sense that they're able to play together. We're able to see them, but the quality of music stacked up in a lineup at a festival that on a later weekend has like Kane Brown headlining. <laughs> The yeah, fact the that we got to see this My lineup eyes is aren't amazing. Too far apart. And I saw a yeah. bunch of Twitter traffic and and online shit about people who act, who were there tweeting shit out and being like, "This is awesome! This is amazing! What a lineup!" You know, Whitey's killing it, Jinx is killing it, like all all of this stuff. And I'm like, "Yeah, it was amazing. I can yeah. confirm it was amazing." Yeah, that was yeah the best. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so last week there were some albums that came out. Um, if I can find them, uh, there were three ish and a song, uh, Lori McKenna's the tree, which is just an amazing album. Lori McKenna is, she's the one who wrote the humble and kind, right? Humble and honored. Uh, I'm pretty sure she I did. I do not know. I'm pretty sure she did. But yeah, so she has a fantastic, it's a very traditional country album. She's always been traditional. She's amazing. Listen to it. Yeah. Her album, um, her album before it the bird and the rifle i really really like and i am I'm embarrassed sure to was, say i haven't I'm pretty sure that to... album had humble and kind on it did it no oh, fuck me um i am embarrassed to say that i haven't listened to the tree yet because i'm a terrible person <sighs> you fool. Uh, um, you never listened oh, it does to have the... humble and kind on it how about that um yeah, I, say, I thought it did but i think she's really good so i definitely will be listening to it yeah. Um, next is Clay Hess Band's Just Another Story. They're just a fantastic bluegrass album. Every time a fantastic bluegrass album comes out, I have to post it because they're all because bluegrass is amazing. So. Bluegrass is amazing. Um, then finally is Found Wild, a uh, self-titled EP. These dudes are so good. I went to their Facebook page when I tagged them in a Facebook post. It they came up. They have eighty three likes on Facebook. What? I was like, how the fuck? Do we have more likes than you? You guys are so good. But their top song is like 16,000 plays on Spotify, so I don't know how the fuck that happens. <laughs> but, I, don't know. I mean, to yeah. be fair, I stopped liking things on Facebook a while ago because it was just a pain in the ass. Yeah, but even Cody Jinx has like 200,000. <laughs> good. Like, Deserves it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, so that's a fantastic one as well, so listen to that. And then also it came out, it's not an album, but... Aaron Enderlin's World Without Willie. That song great. came out, and it's a great song. Listen to it. Um, That's... What else do we got? I'm sorry. I close my notes. Oh, yeah. What else have you been listening to, Kevin? What have you been doing? Here I've been listening to the good. sound of my softball team's four-peat victory. <laughs> you're, the, you're the proudest yeah. person in your house. I feel you're like I've been... the proudest person on this This podcast. is going to sound like the softest bitch-ass comment in the world, but I feel so sore. From those three softball games yesterday, it is alarming. Uh, but actually, what I've been listening to is essentially. Uh, so I took my four horsemen playlist and I removed Luke Combs and I added Ward Davis, and so now I've been <laughs> smart. And smart. so I've been smart, smart, smart. And so I was. I've been listening to that basically on loop for the yeah. last several days. It's, so, it's such a shame how Luke Combs has fallen off the radar. Yeah, but it even—I mean—it also player. makes way more sense sonically to put Ward in there yeah. instead. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I've been just listening to music. That's what her. <laughs> um, you have been doing what exactly? Uh, you can find us at countryhodgepodge.com on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Country Hodgepodge. On Spotify, you can find the Hodgepodgecast picks where I upload all the songs we talk about on each episode, so you can listen to them all. There's like a thousand songs on there now from all the podcasts. Uh, you can also find Kevin's picks of the week, which is on a link through the website, or if you search the username Donkey Factory, one word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can, yeah, it's where Kevin just uploads ten songs every week that you should be listening to, and if you're not, well, he'll find you and kill you. If you don't shoot uh, big red, fuck you. <laughs> every Friday we put out the new albums on a playlist called Friday's New Music which is tweeted out every Friday so check that shit out yeah, it's also yeah, an yeah. article every Friday on the website you can click on and yeah. see what the album covers look like and shit uh, you can find one of our you can buy one of our dumb shirts on a link through the site uh, or you can go to T Public search Country Hodgepodge we've got Walker Hayes Blows uh, Sam Hunt Sucks uh, God Bless American Aquarium Single as Fuck America, fuck yeah. We've got all these great shirts. They're fantastic. You should buy them. Yeah. Uh, I still need to put up my eyes are too far apart. Haven't had time. All right. And, I need, right. and I need a shirt that just says Gooch. <laughs> um, 
And then you can find me on Instagram at chp underscore clifftron, Kevin on Twitter and Instagram at chp underscore charge. Please rate and review the podcast on iTunes. It'll help us get found. People have been reviewing us every once in a while, and it makes me a happy, happy boy. Um, so apparently we're being found because Co Wetzel's episode has more plays than the previous two weeks before it. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm okay with I'm, that. I'm down with it. Welcome. So all people of are you. liking people are liking Co, and it's great. Um, so that's it for this week. Next week we're gonna be talking about the great Sam Hunt for episode, <laughs> six, for episode 69. <laughs> <laughs> so until next week, I'm Steve Hodge, as always, joined by Kevin Hodge, saying goodbye, good night, and good Charlotte. <sighs> <sighs>